Number 10, the owner is desperate to move their employees in so they can start making money. Uh, but there is still some painting to be done. The kitchenette cabinets are not installed yet. Uh, and the carpet in three rooms has not yet been installed due to a uh, back order. What could the architect, architect do to help this situation? A, help negotiate the issues between the owner and the GC. B, declare substantial completion. C, schedule, the schedule is the contractual prerogative of the GC. D, unless there are specific penalties listed in the contract, there is no recourse for the owner in this situation. So, in general, yes, the GC is responsible for the schedule. That's absolutely true. Uh, if there are penalties involved, that does absolutely give the owner a little bit more leeway uh, or uh, push uh, in the situation in order to be able to get something to happen. Uh, you very well might get into the middle of negotiating between the owner and the GC to make it happen in a sort of reasonable and efficient way. But the probable best answer here is declare substantial completion. And the question becomes then, okay, what is substantial completion? Well, substantial completion is this sort of odd little moment in the process that uh, doesn't seem like that big a deal. Uh, but in fact, it's a huge deal from, uh, it, it, from the sort of paperwork side of how the schedule works. It's a really important concept. Uh, so substantial completion is obviously when things are substantially complete. Um, but what that technically means is things are complete enough, meaning it meets the code enough that an owner could move in. So it doesn't mean that things are done. It's not final completion. It means that it's not going to be uh, a situation where if people moved in, the building would not meet the code. So, for example, if some of the walls weren't finished and they were fire rated walls, well, that's part of the code. That's a part of the separations or a stairwell wasn't finished, or the handrails weren't in on the stairwell, or something. Those are all code issues, and they would not be part, uh, like you would have to finish those things before you could declare substantial completion. But the three examples given here are, so there's some painting to be done, some kitchenette cabinets, uh, some you know, little, uh, little kitchen cabinets uh, in a conference room or something, uh, and a couple of rooms don't have carpet. Uh, you could absolutely, if those are the only things that are left, you could absolutely declare substantial completion and then the owners could move their people in. Uh, and it's, a, like I said, an important moment uh, and you, the architect, actually declare substantial completion. You actually say to the inspectors, we believe we're at substantial completion. The uh, inspectors will take a look if there are inspectors who will do that, like not everywhere in the country has that, but the inspectors, if there are there, uh, will take a look and will agree with you or not agree with you. Uh, and then it is now substantially complete, at which point it means it's occupiable. You might get partial substantial completion, like maybe half the building is occupiable, but the other half isn't yet, or the first floor is occupiable, but the second floor isn't, something like that. But the idea of substantial completion is it's complete enough that it meets enough of the code issues uh, that uh, it's going to be safe for people to move in. Doesn't mean it's necessarily a good idea for people to move in. Uh, you know, they're still painting. Well, now they're going to be painting around all your employees and dripping on the desks and you know causing all kinds of problems. They're, they're, you're going to move desks in and chairs and all that, and then move them out in order to be able to put the carpet in on those three rooms. You know, like it it may not be a smart plan, but if they need to get going, it absolutely is uh, the sort of logical thing to happen. So it has important meaning in terms of when. Uh, the owner can start occupying the building and therefore generating revenue. Uh, but it also has important uh, meaning from the contractor standpoint. You can imagine you're a contractor, you've just painted the corridors, and then uh, you're still in the middle of doing a bunch of stuff, and then you walk in the next day and they've moved in a bunch of desks and they've dinged up the corridors. Like, how do you, you know, whose fault is that? You know, it's hard, it's hard to be able, you know, days later to say, well, no, that was, that was your guys moving furniture in, not my guys not painting it well. Uh, and so it's a complicated moment. But the other important aspect of substantial completion is when things, once you declare substantial completion, that's the start of all the warranties. So if you declare it too early 
and the owner doesn't move in for, say, three months, uh, and you have a one-year warranty on a bunch of different things, well, you've effectively given the owner nine-month warranty because uh, they didn't move in for three months. So there was no reason to start those warranties back three months before they were ready to move in. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of things like warranties that happen at substantial completion. So it's kind of this switching moment. If the owners start to move in, well now they're taking over the electrical bill. While it's during construction, the electrical bill typically would be handled by the GC because that's part of the construction means and methods. Uh, and then you get to substantial completion, now there's, uh, the, own the owner is sort of claiming ownership of the building, well now that electrical uh, and other similar uh, bills go to the owner instead of the GC. So it's one of those paperwork moments where all kinds of things switch over at substantial completion. But you might have, between substantial completion and final completion, you might have a year. You might have you know, easily a month or two months or three months. Uh, it depends on what's going on. It might be that the you know, as we said, the carpet is back order. Well, maybe it takes six months to get the carpet, and then they finally get it, all right, they put it in, now we're finally complete, right? So uh, substantial completion just means that it's occupiable uh, in a code-related way, and at that point, all this paperwork stuff starts to shift back and forth. So this is one of your roles as the architect is to say, yep, we're there, uh, you know, there are no code-related issues that are gonna be in our way, so we can go ahead and do this. Uh, and then all of those things start to shift around. You do it too early, you're cheating the owner out of uh, time on the warranties, et cetera, and they're now paying the electric bills for the contractor and all of that. So you don't want to do it too early, you do it too late. Uh, well, then the owner is not getting generating uh, economic uh, activity out of the building and they're losing money. So it's a, it's a nuanced idea about when that moment should happen. And it's kind of an interesting one. It's worth sort of checking out.